Currently, I'm making a game, and I figured I might as well share a little bit of the development. So, what we have here, it's a big old world, we have a level editor, we can place enemies, this NPC that does nothing, we can fight the sent enemy, All right, just like a basic ability fight showdown. All right, I can shoot this guy, and now he's dead. I'm making editor functionality, I'm trying to build a world, I can paint boxes. I can place boxes. I can do a few fancy things with that. Importantly, I can edit terrain. Right, it's actually quite laggy to edit terrain like this, which I need to fix eventually. Uh, that is because I added some new functionality after I added terrain growth. Oh, which is that we now have uh, this kind of like bedrock stuff that prevents you from getting through. All right, it's an indestructible block, whereas grass you'll be able to go through. Uh, and I kind of want to test things. I want to test things by having a smoothing tool, because if I currently like try to grow back this terrain, what I want it to do, and I'm not sure if it does is I want it to kind of delete the excess green bedrock things. Uh, and I can't really test that too easily. I can kind of do this. But what I really want to do is just get a smoothing tool. And that's something I'm going to do eventually anyway. So that's what I'll be doing for now. That's what I'll be creating. As well as that, I see this bug is here, which is that it's trying to or it's off the bounds of the map, so it's assuming there's like zero. So it's building bedrock down there. As if we're down here and looking up at it. Uh, so I'm curious what that is. Right, is this inside? Right, I just changed, I inverted the logic and now it needs to be ands. And also I didn't even before it wasn't working because I I had the Y comparison so I thought it was working but I didn't really check it uh, and I should have been inverting it if it was using ORs that should be good that's good and should just work now That should also, because of some wrapping issue, it should change things here, maybe? No, because it's a tile specific one. Alright, that's good. Alright, so I fixed the issue with the map bleeding. That's good. Next thing is the smoothing tool. So, to make a new tool, at the moment, I haven't figured out too much about how I want to do this. So, I just have some switch statements. Right, so I can go over to the enum, add a new tool. I can say smooth terrain. Like that. default settings for that yet, but I will make it a certain key. I'll make that 7. Okay, and now a little update. There we go. So if the editor tool is smooth terrain, 
we'll say the radius is like 10 and we can draw it right, I already have kind of something there strength I can copy over a lot of these things from here. All right, I just want to change what I do with the data, the same data that I used in the growth tool. So now I kind of want to have a region. I already have the region code here. I'll change any instance of growth to smooth. and make sure these are inside of the level. Uh, what does that mean for us? To do, make sure these are inside the level. We loop here. I guess we should. <laughs> we should. So there's a way to cap a region right now, which is quite nice. Oh, actually, we I can delete that to-do because I just did that. I did that earlier when I made this function. So I can get rid of that capped region there. vertical distance. We can have that control still. drawing. I just want to copy it over. I might change this stuff later, but for now it's just quick to do this. I can delete that to do because I did that. So that's our smooth terrain tool. It does not do anything, but it exists. It should smooth if mouse held. And so I believe that I should have this be zero. Something probably zeroes this. Right, if ignore vertical distance is true. There we go, so, oh, that's not good. I 
it was being a little bit weird, but I... I wonder. Maybe the radius is just too small. Oh, I need to set that to false. Okay, now it'll work. So, now I need to smooth, and I'm not sure if I want to take a weighted average. Like, so I already know that I kind of want each tile. We're gonna say that this is like, just a bumpy ground. Right, and I'm not sure if I want Okay, so I know that I want the application of the smoothing to have this kind of weight. So the center one is the most smoothed by the average. Is that a good idea? Maybe. However, I'm thinking maybe I should also have them influence the average by their distance from your cursor. This will require two for loops where we calculate the average and then we apply the average. And they're both going to be using the same influence amount. One is going to compute the volume point, like just average, smooth. So it makes sense that we should have that based, be based on distance, otherwise it's all going to converge. Which is not bad, that's kind of what smoothing's meant to be. But I would like it to be natural. On top of that... If it is further away, yeah, it shouldn't influence it. Like, if you have a big old cliff, and then it, like, slumps down. If you're including that slump down region, even though it's super far away from your one point you're checking, you know, then maybe you don't want that influencing as much. You know, you don't want to just level it entirely. So we will use some kind of distance. Okay. Computed average will be the value we fill here. And just instead of changing the data here, what we can do, say computed average, and computed average total weight, right? If I pull up a calculator here, I think that if I do, like if I want an average between 2 and 1 and I want to influence it towards 2, maybe 2 is towards the center, you know, and I want the center to be higher, I think if I multiply that, or if I have the total number here, right, so I can add 2 and 1, and it gives me 3, but let's say that in the weighted average, 2 influenced it by 5 parts, and one influenced it by two parts. Well, like three divided by seven isn't gonna give us a sensible answer. So I kind of have to I have to think about how to weight this. It's been a bit since I've last done weighted averages. I know that if I take like a standard average, if we take the average between two and one, it's just two times and then like half of the elements plus one times half of the elements gives us 1.5. Right, so if we know if it's a third of the elements, then it's two times one third of the elements plus one times two thirds of the elements and that weights it towards one by two thirds. But I don't quite know how I want to do this here. I have an influence amount. If I multiply it by the influence amount, I think if I say like 2 and 1, 2 has 0.75 influence, like 3 quarters, 1 has 0.25. Then, if 
I multiply 2 by its own weight before adding it to the average, and then multiply 1 by its own weight, and then add it to the average? Oops. Right, and that's the full average. And then I divide it by... Well... Okay. If I do that... Then that just gives me the weighted average. So, my issue here is that I don't have the max. But here it just adds up to 1. We want it to add up to 1, so we want to divide by the max. So if we kind of want to... Let's come up with a different scenario, where 2 has a weight of 2, and 1 has a weight of 7. If we multiply them by their weights, then we can say 1 times 7, plus 2 times 2, out of, and then the total weights, which is 2 plus 7. Then we get 1.222. Right? That sounds, that sounds good. Right? Uh, if we say like 2 plus 7, it's 9, 2 sevenths times 2, plus 7 ninths, wait, 2 ninths times 2, plus 7 ninths. I have to type this correctly into a calculator. That's 2 times 2 ninths, plus 1 times 7 ninths. Yes, okay. So, that's our solution. So we do want the total weight. And so that's, instead of influence amount, this is weight. Our computed average plus equals the current noise data. Current noise height. times the weight, and then we say computed average total weight, plus equals weight, and then we divide it. That should be good. Uh, we'll look for vestigial variables, we might not need all these. Maybe we do. Anyway, now that we have the average, we can use a lerp function. I don't have a lerp function. That's alright, I'll make one. Instead of v3s, these are just floats. There we go. So now, we know the influence amount. We know how much we want it to move towards the average. So now we can just say the noise data is equal to the lerp between itself. The computed average. And the influence amount. This is going to be strong. I'm going to probably need to smooth it. Oh, the math module has it. A, B, T. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> oh, that works. That works. I can grow terrain. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. Okay, let's make controls for this tool. That worked immediately. That is satisfying. Alright, so I'll delete that lerp function. Then, I already have an area with tool controls here. I'll just add next to the grow terrain tool. The smooth tool. Which has a radius and a strength. 
for consistency, I'm going to make its own variables. Train smooth tool. Don't like how small these are, so I'll do that. Then upon entering it, when we enter, I want to give it the same default values. Okay, and then uh, it does not change because it's not using those values right now. So let's go fix fast to fix. I just say radius is editor that smooth radius. And I want to use the strength. So influence amount. If I use influence amount, I want to kind of multiply it. So smooth influence amount. And I guess strength doesn't need to be Strength needs to be a value between 0 and 1 for this tool. It's not one that can be, inf that can be infinite. And we can just multiply it by strength. Strength can be 1 by default. Like that. So now, we make sure strength is set to 1 on default. So we just want that to be 1.0. And then we can go over to the controls. Home will set it to 1. Page up will... Oh, we'll just give a delta. And we'll go like maybe a quarter or third of a strength a second times input delta time to make sure it's per second. And then we can just clamp the value between zero and one. That is fun, uh, but this isn't working. Page down should move me down. There we go. A little strength at the bottom. We can turn that down to like 0.4, maybe even 0.09. Now it's just not moving as quickly. Oh, that is nice. Okay, so the main reason I wanted to do smoothing, well, like, there was the obvious reason of it's good for the game. We want to make levels utilizing it. But also, you can see I, I have a bunch of entities here. Like all these green, this whole green fill is full of square entities. Maybe it'll show more obviously from the player point of view. Where the render actually will outline the tiles as I fall. Alright, it's a lot of tiles. What if I smooth this? I'm going to delete the player. What if I smooth this? Does it delete them? I'm, I want to check my code because it should delete them. Right? 
because we're going to smooth this. There's going to be so many excess. These are unbreakable bedrock. We only want enough to like hide the player from the edge of the map. And so we're going to smooth that out. The number of boxes is decreasing dramatically. I think. Oh, that's going to lag it a bit. It's a big region. Now. 114,685 is the current number of boxes. If it was much more than that earlier, then I've succeeded. It looks good. It's got a little bit of excess, but that's just probably because my code is not perfect right now. Right, if we smooth terrain, we should see them kind of deleting. I think I see them kind of changing, phasing out of existence. Maybe phasing in even. Yeah, it's totally going up. It's 115,000. But it is because I'm raising the terrain over a large scale. The point is, when we were looking earlier, there was a huge tower of like 10 in a row. And now we don't see 10 in a row. We see two in a row. Right, and in a just level. I did something funky here where I actually used a code block. And I inserted it using for loops based on different conditions. Uh, making use of the language. It's not very elegant. Uh, it's basically like making a function, but you know you're only using it here. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to use that kind of pattern a lot, but... Probably not. It kind of reduces understanding the flow control. Uh, so, yeah, if I change this to like negative one, then maybe I'll start just deleting things randomly. There, yeah. Negative two. I'm changing the threshold at which it deletes. Right, so this is going really high. This is a lot of tiles, a huge amount. And we're going to smooth it. I'm going to hold shift so it does global space. Smooth. And a kerfumples. And it's actually going down. 110,000 now. It went down by like a thousand in that dragging streak. And look at that. We can see under the level. Isn't that cool? Right, and that, the reason I do this is because these tiles are destructible, but the bedrock is not. So I think that's very cool. Right, if the player were to destroy that, which it takes a while to destroy right now, I just don't have any sort of powerful projectile and I gave them high health. It takes like 16 shots. That is very cool. So now I have a terrain smoothing tool. One last thing I want to do with the terrain smoothing tool. Is that colored box? The color. I want the progress to medium strength to be like 0.5. I already did the code that would interpolate the colors. Hmm, not quite. Okay, why is that? Box maker. Well, we can simplify this. I just can do zero to high. And so now we can just say the visualization color is a vector for 
that lurps from zero to high based on just the growth value because it's, neg it's zero to one. It's a strength. That should be satisfactory. I could also make a utility lerp function, which will be like lerp x, y, z, uh, y being in the middle. If a is smaller than 0.5, then we return a standard alert between x, y, and a times 2. If it's greater or equal to, then we go y to z. should just be good. That should never have any sort of other return value. I wonder if the compiler will scream at me. So medium strength. That color. I like having the colors be just globals that I can refer to. They're defined at the top of render right here. There we go. Mead strength. Yeah, it's screaming at me. even though it's technically, unless maybe there's some kind of weird floating point thing, it should be impossible, which we should just say else. All right, the colors is choosing are weird. X to Y, and this is instead of eight times two, should be a minus 0 0.5 times 2. Very nice. Alright, that is a terrain smoothing tool. That is fancy. I like that. We can put our player in. Get a little view. And that's it. That is terrain smoothing. Uh, built into my own engine. Very cool.